Yeah, they're up on the screen. Wildflowers? Yes. Maybe yes. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you don't yeah, need them. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, how many people actually have some snow left in your yard in the last? Yeah. I do too. One there pile. <laughs> oh, one. It's going to melt. And yeah, now I'm going to add to it. My more slow from those more. Sorry. I mean, it's root stimulation, right? That's what we call it. <laughs> yeah. I think like a lot of people when they when they moved into the neighborhood into Prescott, they didn't take into account whether they're living on the north side of the street or the south side. And our neighbors we're on the south side, and our neighbors are like. Why didn't we move to the south side? I'll go, you have good weather. Don't worry. Just hang in there. In the uh, yeah. yeah. It never melts. I know. Yes, that's true. That's true, Ken. <laughs> oh, we're going. I looked at my bulbs last night, and they are. Oh, hey, can you hear me now? Epidil, How about now? Um, it it was going. Iris. Now's the time to clean up your iris. Now. Clear. Mm -hmm. What you'll find is. Got gone. Already done. Oh, it was. Underneath that, there's old green this spring. <laughs> yeah, you know, right? Never seems like it will come. And how far back? They'll start coming back. Uh, end of February, beginning of March, trim them. And as soon as you trim them, they're going to want to start growing. Okay, my fault. My bad. Yeah. End of February, beginning of March. Well, you know, first class of the season. And, you know, you throw a party, you wonder if people will come. It's actually, I'm just nervous. It's going to be it. Then you won't show up. Okay. That's going to just, we just have to add more care. Right, yeah. So, it's so, uh, so very first class. So, every Saturday through, through spring um, at 9.30. So, and, and if you want to see what all those are, they're on our website. How did you all hear about the garden class? Yeah. yeah. Newspaper. Uh, my e newsletter. We have a we have a newsletter and then the couriers. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we're everywhere. So <laughs> we're out. Radio. <laughs> gotcha. Friends are always the best. He tells you, hey, I'm going to a garden class. You want to go? That's called gardening. That's perfect. Anyone else? <laughs> Email good. Seems like it's the newspapers. Throw them in uh, one, two, three newspapers, and then uh, the, the newsletter going out like half of it. And the other half is the different papers. Yeah. I try to do this 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 week, starting right now, starting. So I, I do I produce a radio show and a podcast every week. They're, they're the same. And so part of that is trying to get more and more video. And so I took the last segment and said, let me do a video announcement about the garden class, which is generally what the last six minutes or four, four minutes and 23 seconds of the show is. Announce a class, what's going on. 
And so I did it by video. So we're going to see how to put that out. So you see me talking. Like, hey, come on, guys. It's free. We're, we're cool people. We love great having come from Bob's. We're gardeners. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. So that excited, year, right? <laughs> Today, you're in for a true treat. Uh, I'd like to introduce my daughter, Mackenzie. She's the third generation. Water. <laughs> <laughs> She and Sherry Tweedy have agreed. She, Sherry is my go-to houseplant extraordinaire. Hold on, just a second. So I'm just introing. I'm getting out of this. So uh, Sherry takes care of all of our houseplants, and Mackenzie goes down to the farm. If ever you need a specimen, hand picked. I mean, a taller thing in a in a living room or something. Talk to Mackenzie because she'll go down and pick it for you. Bring it up. Houseplants. Quality is a huge difference with houseplants. You get the cheesy stuff right from Florida. It was they picked it out of a bog, put it on a truck, brought it in, and now it's got disease and problem. Then you struggle. You're like, why, why, why? Don't have green thumbs. What's going on? Because that it was a quality issue. I mean, in shipment. Then it lands in Arizona, where it's really dry, and then it freaks out. <laughs> so we don't we don't have those things here. Ours are all greenhouse grown. That is, they've got controlled environments, they're healthier, the temperature swings are mitigated so that when they go from there to here to your house, they're happier. They just kind of grow, they go better. And then they're, they're touched more. So, you know, the more you touch plants, the better they get. They like to be nipped and tucked and talked to and pinched and, and then they get fuller and, and they have more tendrils coming down so we so is this we, our class or is this oh, your class <laughs> Mackenzie does the quality so it's, I have an audience in the microphone uh anyway I'll, I'll give it up so Mackenzie is our general manager next owner she's trained to be the next owner for the next 20 30 years and then Sherry is her right hand person with all of the house plant for that give it up for Mackenzie and Sherry and I'm just going to be passing around. This is our sign up sheet. We're going to have handouts and they'll be sent out on Monday. Um, but if you want the handouts, you need your email. And even if you're a garden care member, this is different. So just, they don't correlate. So just letting you know. This is different. Okay. So this is making sure you specifically get that handout. So it's for you. Okay, so we're kind of going to go, we're going to talk about plants, we're going to talk about uh, product, we're going to talk about soils, and how to replant something, and that's kind of like the outline. And then Sherry will kind of come in here and there, and she, she, she's my specialist on this stuff, so she'll kind of talk about the plants, and then we'll go into products and stuff. And then we'll do Q&A at the end, so we'll answer your questions and stuff, we'll leave plenty of room for that. This is about an hour class, so... Do you want to start talking with your section here going on? Why don't you start in the gear and then I'll okay. just jump right in. Okay, so basically I'm going to start with like what's good for offices, what's good for dark spaces, and what's good for light. And then just some of my really good hardy houseplants for you guys. So we'll start with that. So dark offices or dark spaces. There's really plants need light to grow. We all know this, but certain things can handle that darkness more because they don't need the light to grow. So you've got... ZZs and snake plants are number one. I'm missing my snake plant, but ZZs and snake plants. They're really hardy plants. I water them once a month. They don't need more than that, especially if you're going to replant them. Um, and then the air, the snake plant, it was on NASA's air study. So it's really great for air quality and things like that. Okay. That's just one, one this variety. Is variety. So this comes in green. And then I've also got Raven ZZs, which are more of like a black purple kind of thing. Um, I got big ones back there. I just didn't want to carry it. It's heavy. Um, so those are the two colors for ZZs. And then these guys come in uh, so many varieties and different textures and uh, widths and stuff. So there's yellow outlines, green, whatever. But this is a generic snake plant. Um, and these guys are solid for offices and things like that. And they get pretty big. They, they don't grow super fast, but they can get like a good size within a matter of a couple of years. Um, so those are good solid ones. Also, you can do... For dark, dark things like that, if you want something big, the Dracaenas, and I've got them tucked around all the corners of the room. This is just an easy one. They can handle that kind of darkness or, or a little bit darker space. They can do everything, but they can go towards the dark. Um, once a month watering on these guys as well, and they, they don't like a lot of water, they like to go dry. 
So those are your three solid dark house plants. There's more that you can do. I just wanted to give you guys a basis. Light, you go on the opposite end. If you have a lot of light, things are like, whoa, we're startled. <laughs> or, or if it's like more direct light, succulents as always, that's a solid. Um, but then you can also do like prayer plants and ethereums. Now this is kind of a new variety of ethereum that came out recently um, with the darker leaves. And it does, when it throws off a bloom, it's gonna be a very dark red bloom. So this is a big red anthurium. That's what they call it. But uh, I'm like, why? where's the red? There's no red. And so it's the bloom that comes off and then also these dark leaves. So these guys like water. That's why they like the light because they need a lot of water. They're more of a tropical. So if you can have humidity in your room or your bathroom or something, they'll thrive right there. Um, but this is, I just want to show you because it's newer and I was excited and I like new plants. Um, Rare plants are also very great because they, what they do is they fold up at night. They'll crunch their leaves up and that's why they're, they're prayer plants. And then they'll open them again with the light. So they'll kind of conserve themselves and then they'll open. So they're really cool. This is a red one. They also have green ones that are more green. So there's two varieties in that. I've only got the red right now. Um, so those are some solid ones. I also brought this up. And is there anything you want to add into? When you're through. Okay, I'll just talk about this and I'll let her talk. So this I brought in, um, it's a ficus, but it's their new cling-on ficus. Because if you know ficus at all, as soon as you touch it and move it, it drops all of its leaves. And it's got to restart. <laughs> so they're great plants, they're cool, but they drop. So these guys, and I've noticed this, because uh, I moved them all the way around, they don't drop their leaves as much. They'll keep them on. I know they're smaller, but like they, they're cling-on ficus, right? They're adorable. And this is a variegated one. I also have some that are not very good. They're just straight green, like a normal ficus. So that's why I like these guys. I, I wanted to try them and they, they keep their leaves. So I thought that was really cool. Um, so I'll just stop back really quick and I'll let her finish these thoughts and then uh, we'll kind of move forward. But Thank you, Candy. Yeah. Oh, I'll get out of your way. Um, I think the first question we all need to ask ourselves is why do we want to have houseplants? What are they good for? Let's count the yeah. ways, okay? We're talking about not only beauty, natural beauty in your home, but they help clean the air. These plants, like trees and shrubs, they take in carbon dioxide and they give us oxygen. They clean the air in our home. It's very important. Make you feel better too. <laughs> so um, not only adding natural beauty to your spaces, but when you think about particularly specimen plants, you want to think about like, like their furniture. If you have an empty corner, you have a space, like, oh, I don't know what to do with that. Put a lamp? No, no, no. <laughs> put a plant. <laughs> put, a, put a nice Dracaena, some easygoing, taller house plant. And then what I like to do, which is really beautiful, <clears throat> you want to group your plants. Put the tall one in the, in the back, you leave it alone, but I also put three or five smaller plants in the front. You've created a focal point in your home. It's just, it's just beautiful. And you want to put them places where the people see them. You don't want to hide your house plants. You want to be proud of them and show them off. Don't hide them someplace where you can't enjoy them, eh, except in the bathroom. Um, now I'm going to go over three or four basic important things when you're going to purchase and have house plants. The first of all, there are three major things. Light. Figure out where your window is. Do you have a south facing light coming in? North, east, west makes a big difference because most of the plants are pretty, eh, they'll take just about any light, but a lot of plants, they need a brighter light or they'll need a kind of a medium light. So figure out what your light is. And when you come in to talk to me or, or Kenzie, just go, yeah, I've got a west facing window. It'll help us to help you guys a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is watering. One of the great things we have, <laughs> I use it all the time, water meter. Most of your house plants are not going to be in the wet zone. If you stick this in your plant a few inches down and it reads wet, do not water, please. Unless it's a fern. Well, that's a different story. But anyway, um, mostly you're going to find the, the moisture meter when it goes just about into the dry zone is a good time to look to water. Another great tool is your finger. Stick your index finger a couple inches down into the soil. If that soil feels damp at all, do not water. Back off for a few days until it feels a little bit dry. 
But the moisture meter, we recommend, we sell a lot of these. These are pretty foolproof. So these are yeah, great. Let me um, yeah, add, add on. Yeah. So the thing with this is and why we use it even in here, I use it for my big stuff, is because in Arizona, I find that the top of the plant will be completely dry, but the bottom is really wet, especially in winter. That's where most people overwater their stuff. That's all I've seen. Yeah, you guys know. So that's why this is great, because it gets you down to that bottom, because sometimes your finger won't go down that far. Um, so it just saves your plants, especially in winter. In summer, they dry out, doesn't matter. You mm -hmm. can't really go wrong there. It's that mm -hmm. winter time that you need to worry about. That's that I find people struggle with. So I just want to add that in there. Yeah. And uh, the last two things I want to mention that are equally as important are drainage and the kind of soil and container you have for your plants. So make sure you purchase a good potting soil. Uh, Waters yeah. has a great potting soil we use for all of our house plants. I'll talk about great. this in a little bit. And yeah. it's got a lot of organic matter in it and it's made primarily, well, for, for, hot, for house plants and then all your, all your container plants as well. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure you purchase a pot, a container that has a hole at the bottom. Yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is water your plant and have water sit under the, the pot and it'll kill the roots and it'll kill yeah. your plant. So like this, I mean, this has got one where it's a plug in. So you just take that out. I would always suggest yeah. and just get yourself a saucer because if you don't want that doesn't have a hole, you just you, people overwater it because water will just sit there. So only like bog plants or ferns or things can handle stuff without holes. Yeah. Um, but even this might get clogged up some, so you got to constantly go in and, you know, poke it, yeah, do stuff like that. This one's got one on the side, but with the saucer, so if you don't want to, like, buy a saucer, yeah. you can always do something like this. But drainage holes are important here. Yeah, excess out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, yeah, I always like the saucer. I just want to add also that if you, go, if you have a pretty container that you guys love, your grandma's old teapot or whatever, doesn't have a hole in it. Make sure your plant has a hole in the bottom and you can just take it out and water it separately and Easy. then drop it back into the de decorative pot. Yeah, that's right? what my mom does all yeah. the time. Yeah, <laughs> I and mean, it, just, it just makes sense and that way you can have your pretty pot as well. Right, so, yeah. Ooh, all. yeah, they're all real good. Um, I have a few more plants I wanted to mention or did yeah. you wanna? No, go for okay. it because I won't go on the we are in Houseplant 101. Some of you are in Houseplant 102, 103. So um, I want to start, though, with your specimens. Um, the Dracaenas have already been mentioned. If you look around here, the Dracaena in the corner is kind of a cor uh, margin. marginata. Anyway, that takes low light. The point being, the darker the foliage in some of your specimen plants, the lower the light. If you have a plant that has a lot of color, it might need a little more light. Yeah. Just a rule of thumb. It's not always that way, but it is. But anyway, your Dracaenas, this is one, our big seller. I call this the Martha Stewart plant because this is the one she has in all of her redecorating. She will decorate with the Ficus lorata, the fiddle leaf fig. Why? Because it's easy to grow. They like to have their leaves washed off every once in a while, but we're able to get in some big specimens. So if you have a corner with you know, moderate light, then you can get one of these. These will get to be six, eight foot tall, easy. Okay? And then you can always plant forward. But um, the Dracaenas are great. This and is then, another uh, variety of Dracaena, by Yeah, the way. this is another variety. And this will get, eventually they get big. So you can start out with the baby Dracaena. I think it's like tall. a tricolor or marginata. Marginata, yeah. Magenta has a little red in it. They're beautiful as juveniles, but eventually you're going to want to move this up just one size. This is in a six inch pot. You're going to want to move this to an eight inch pot. And then when it gets big or in an eight inch pot, you want to move it to a 10 or 12 inch pot. You don't want to give them too much room. They don't like it. They like to be a little crowded. So this will eventually get four or five foot tall too. Um, one of the things I recommend for specimens, if you, if you don't have the money, you don't want to take the time to get a six footer, get a plant stand. We have beautiful plant stands here. There are places in Prescott that have plant stands. Make it the focal point, put it on a plant stand. Your ferns, your, your specimens, any of these can be made focal by putting them on a plant stand, okay? And they just add more beauty to you. But um, one of the other ones I love, you guys have seen these before, Peace Lily. 
I mean, come on. It's got this beautiful flower. It takes medium low light. I let it get relatively dry. It'll get maybe twice this size, so it's good tabletop. Anything like that, it's, a, it's just a good companion plant. Real easy to grow, peace lilies. And then we have, oh, one of my favorites, particle. Excuse me, <laughs> get my Chinese evergreen here. See, that it's is right that. here. Where did I put it? You oh, thank you. Moved everything around on her. Yeah, so. It's like, I haven't been here in a while, so. <laughs> This is one of my favorite house plants. This is called a Chinese evergreen. It will get maybe twice this size, mm -hmm. but it, it's beautiful. It does have a little bit of a bloom. Mm -hmm. So moderate light, it will tolerate low light. The peace lily will tolerate low light. But most plants, give them a little more light, you might find they push them a little more growth. Mm -hmm. This guy will be good in this pot, probably till spring. This is a six inch pot. I will move this up to an eight inch pot if you can in the spring. And that, because when you water a house plant, you're gonna notice a couple things. If the water comes out the bottom, which it has to, this is the sign of good watering. You must let a little water come out the bottom of your pot. That ensures the whole pot, whole plant and the root zone has been watered, but it also allows oxygen to get into the system here. So anyway, when you water and you notice the water just running through and you got to water the plant every four or five days, it needs to be moved to a bigger pot. It's telling you there's no more root zone for the soil. So just kind of use your, your thinking and you touch the soil and go, oh, it dried out in three days. Oh, probably telling you it needs to be repotted to the next size. So yeah, if, you, yeah, if you go too big in your potting, like you don't want to constantly repot and you're like, I just want to yeah. get a big one and go, yeah, no. it will shock your plant. That's why you can't upsize too much because it will, it will shock it and then it will just die on you. And you're like, what happened? So that's why you go one size up because it, it will still be contained. It still feels like it's okay, but it will grow bigger. Yeah, so that's why it's important to do it in stages. Um, do we want to go on to some accessory products here? Yeah. So, yeah, but you know, you want to start with the, the fruit? Yeah, I'll start, I'll start with the fruit. This is my favorite houseplant food. <laughs> All my coworkers know this. I sell a lot of this. This is Schultz houseplant food. One of the reasons I love it, and I've been using it for 20 bucks for you. Anyway, long time. Um, it's an equal nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium are these first three numbers. You need them all, okay, for house plants and most of your plants in general. But the phosphorus, that number in the middle, helps bloom. So you got an African violet, you got maybe even orchids, but anything that blooming mm -hmm. but i you know what i put six drops in a watering can every time i need to water bingo you're done i will cut back a little in the winter some people you know maybe instead of six or eight drops i'll use like three because you don't want to you're not going to push a lot of growth in the winter if you notice your house yeah. plants in the winter they're kind of like when's spring coming i mean they're just they're just kind of mine are just kind of sitting there so schultz is good there's also specialty schultz for cactus and African violets, we generally have those as well. Yes, yeah. so you're African violet. Yeah, or well, that's violet. orchid, but I have African violet. I grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> and one of the products we love is the Waters Root and Growth. Why do we use this? When your plant is failing, you're repotting. Anytime you're repotting any of your container plants, this protects the plant from shock. So you use a little bit of this, it's a little stinky. Mm -hmm. So we don't wanna use it all the time to feed. It has some, some good ingredients, but for shock and transplant, if, you're, if your house plant's looking a little sad, go ahead and transplant, generally speaking, is what you're gonna to need to do. And then you're gonna use a little bit of the root and grow. It's good for all plants, trees, shrubs, house plants. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything. Transplant shock, this is what you need to yeah. have. It's low numbers, so you can't really overdo it. It's not yeah. going to shock your plant yeah. into like overdrive. And then um, it's it's good for even outdoor stuff, and you use it every two weeks until you start seeing new growth. House plants is a little different, but for generic stuff, every two weeks until you see growth. And then you'll move into like different products. But that's that. Um, the other guys, so if you know, a lot of people right now in the winter, they get fungus gnats. Um, so we'll kind of go into bugs, so fungus gnats, Bug. things like that, those little things that fly around, and you're like, where the heck are they coming from? So those are, where's my, can you make some systemic granules? 
Sure, I missed that. So these are what you get the flying guys with because they're, you just can't kill them otherwise. Mm. They'll fly around, they're just yellow traps. You just stick it in your house plants and you go. Now most of these things show up in winter because you're hot, your house is hot, your plants are wet, and they stay wet longer so you get these fungus snaths. They can come in from anywhere. They can come in from your soil because a lot of people move their house plants in and outdoors. They can come in just when you, from grocery stores and things like that and they'll just get into your soil. So that's why you get the flying ones wet. To get them in your house plant, because um, that's where they're coming from. They're coming from your dirt, and they'll lay eggs in there, and they'll continually self-reproduce and all of that. So they're very hard to get rid of without systemic granules. So these guys, this is just, you just sprinkle it around your soil, and it's very little amount. I think it's like a tablespoon for like a six inch. So very little amount. Sprinkle it around. Let your house plant dry out as much as possible before you go and water again, because you don't want to water this out before it kills the eggs. And it will just st stop that life cycle of it going. So this is more important than the sticks. The sticks are just to get the adults that are in your face and you don't want to deal with it. But this is important for right now. I just noticed a lot of people have fungus snacks right now. The other one you'll get and you'll see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just getting better. And I have nets. Okay. At the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let me just repeat that. So she has a, a dog who gets into everything, mm -hmm. and she's been using some of that stuff and wants to make sure that it's safe for pets. It is because you're using such a low amount, even if they get into it, they're not going to get sick from it. Um, so the, it is a safe product. It will be fine because you're not, they're not just, they can't just get into this container and just eat it. But if they do that tablespoon or stuff, they're going to be fine. It's not going to hurt them. Yeah. So you'll be good on that. And then on that note, really quick, on my little labels around, if they have a dog paw on them, they are safe for, for cats and dogs. Just so you guys know, if they have that paw, they're fine. So <laughs> try to help people out. Um, so yeah. So yeah, another product is, um, for mealybug and aphids. You don't see many aphids on the inside plants, but mealybug is huge. It's a little white fuzzy ball. So if you see that, it's usually tucked into plants, so they're very hard to see. But if you see that, you want to immediately get rid of it. Whether that's, you can squish it if you want. If you don't have that many, just squish the little white ball and just get rid of it. If you have a lot of it, triple action is what you're gonna need to use. And you wanna do it almost instantly, otherwise it will spread to the rest of your plants. It is a decimate, it just kills everything in your house plant room. So this is great for that. It's oil-based, so you just wanna make sure sun doesn't hit it like through a window or something on your house plant um, and just spray your plant down. You might have to use it twice with mealybug just because it pops back up, um, but this is the product you're gonna want. It's organic, it's safe for pets. So if it dries up, once it dries, it's safe. So if they eat it or anything, they won't get sick. Um, so those are the big insects that usually show up on house plants. I have seen recently some scale, which they just look like a little, pieces of scale, like armored things that line up on your house plants. People have had it on their amaryllis. And I haven't really seen it much on anything else, but that's the product you'll use as well, along with the systemic for scale, because they're just really harsh. Um, I have a quick question. Uh, spider mites mm -hmm. can be harmful to several types of house plants. Mm -hmm. they're, hard, they're, they're insidious. They're hard to see until sometimes your plant is infested. It looks like on the underside of the leaf, you'll see like a web-like thing or a little, it, the, the leaf will look speckled because those little critters get in there and suck the juice out of the plant. Yeah. And we do have systemics for spider mite. I don't know, this is not the exact product, That's but you have to, if you have spider mites, you've got to get at them right away. They'll spread around your other plants and they're, they're nasty. So we also want to take care of Spider mites primarily with a systemic because the plant takes the uh, insecticide up in the roots. Yeah. The bugs eat it and they die. We love that. <laughs> no mess, no fuss. So that's just the other critter you need to be aware of our spider yeah. mites. Please come into the nursery and talk to us and we'll be, I'll look at your plant, bring it in or bring, it, bring us a picture. Always bring us a picture. And, oh, sure, you know, what's going on here? Usually we can figure it out and we'll help you at yeah. that point. We've got a microscope so we can see yeah, yeah, we can just everything, but they mostly show up on um, ivy plants. So if you guys have ivy plants, just keep an eye on it. Totally. That's why I find spider, mo spider mite the most, especially indoors. Outdoors, not so much in terms of getting in. 
So yeah, that's a good call. I forgot yeah. about this. Yeah. Um, Kimos, anything else you want to bring um, up that I'm missing? I, I'm not um, really, I think we're good. I thinking of other things, um, we can go into a little bit more, uh, let's see, hanging plants. Why don't we just go quickly over some great hanging plants? Well, let me, let oh, me go do dirt straight. first. So okay. finish sure. our products. So, sure. oh yeah, planting. Fruit. So I've got three things that you can plant with, with us. Um, right. So we have our soil, which you saw, but that's huge. So if you have like one plant that you're redoing or you want, you don't want that by that much. I've got happy frog. And this is really great stuff because it's got the perlite, the vermiculite peat moss, things that keep your plant wet, but also drainy, keep it drained. I know, drainy. I'm making up words. It's a good new word. <laughs> Staple. Um, this also has bat guano in it and stuff. Ours doesn't, but it's still got, they're both really great products. It just depends on the size that you need. Um, if you have a more succulent plant, like a Dracino or anything in the back of my succulent room, I do cactus mix. And sometimes I'll do a mix of my potting soil and cactus mix because this is very, very light. Water is not very going to stay in this very well because it just likes to drain. So my snake plants, my ZZs, aloes, things like that, I'll plant in this. And if it's big enough, I'll do part potting soil, part this. And it just helps it so you don't have to water every week, but you can skip it a little bit. So that's what I will use for um, dirt products and replanting my different house plants. For the most part, potting soil, but you know, if you don't want to, if, if you find that your things are staying really wet in your house, put some cactus mix and you'll be fine. Um, so the, just wanted to bring that in into the space. Um, yeah, okay, now you can talk about hanging plants. All right, um, take up your time. I'm a child of the 70s, and if some of you are in here, um, you can remember when we were in college or whatever, we had macrame hanging. It's coming <laughs> back. In fact, it is back. So think about not only your hanging plants. This is a particularly easy one. We call this the Swiss cheese plant. It's a philodendron. Okay, philodendrons, the easiest house plants in the world. Yeah, right. <laughs> you really have to work hard killing them, okay? Yeah. But this is gonna grow like a weed, but we, this plant, I would get one of these lovely macrame hangers and just find a place that has just something in the corner or a wall that you can hang this on. But hanging plants, they don't get in the way. So if you've got a space problem, think about hanging, right? That's gonna really help. Um, where is my, this is it, yeah. This, for beginners, is it. This is the yeah. philodendron. Partly uh, philodendron, pothos family. You can't kill it. I let mine go dry for like a month. And I went, oh, wait a minute. And I watered it and came right back. So again, a hanging plant, but you can put it on tabletops, bookshelves, and it will tolerate really low light, okay? It does better in a little brighter light, but yeah, you can put it in a corner and it'll just go up, okay? So we have all of our hanging plants. When you come in here, you notice that also um, you can do ferns. We have we don't have a lot of ferns in right now. It's too cold. <laughs> yeah, but there's some spring. Have Boston's and many different varieties of ferns. You're scared of ferns. You don't need to be. What they love is more moisture, a brighter light. You know, not a bright light, but a brighter window. And what I do is I get a a bucket of water, and I just dunk that sucker in the water, let it drain. You're done put a little fertilizer in the water. You don't have to, you can water it from the top, but anytime we can water plants from the bottom, if you've got a big tub and you can sit your plants in like, you know, six inch, eight inches, six by four, four, four six inches of water, let them soak from the bottom. African violets love that. A lot of plants just prefer to, be, it's called osmosis if you're into that. And the, the, the plant takes it up. Right, and then you don't have to water from the top. It's up to you guys, but it's a very helpful way. If you're busy, you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta water all these plants, put them in a tub of water, come back in two hours, they'll be they'll be watered. Okay. Yeah, just for Arizona, see, I always find that it seems to be the best. Yeah. Because uh, when you top water, it just either dries too quickly or it doesn't get through all the way to the plant. It just goes into the dirt and not the actual plant. So that's what I have found to be the most helpful is if you can soak it, soak it, always better for it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, just top water if you don't have time or you're like it's something that doesn't enjoy a lot of water, yeah. you can do that. That's what I find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I okay. think we'll uh, probably take questions yeah. and answers. Yeah, I, I just forgot that. this one product. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's a great product. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lot because it, it fills up a room. Yeah. But so this is Green Glow, 
And if you don't want to go through and dust a lot of your plants or you want something, and this is for things that are not soft or fuzzy leaves, they're just for waxy leaves. Uh, you just spray it on and it just like, green, it just really makes it shine. I won't do too much, it'll, it'll fill it up. But it I, cleans and shines. Yeah, so it just makes yeah. it like, it just makes it super shiny. I don't know if you, can, you guys can tell that. Yeah, you don't have to wipe. This one is you don't have to wipe the plant. You just spray it on and it covers over the dust. Um, yeah, yeah. That's true, okay? It's true. It's not true. It's like dust plants. Shh. 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 It says it's safe. You don't. You don't have to dust it. It just go. You know, it covers that and anything that's shiny. Shiny. So like these, these um, ZZ. ZZs. I mean, this just makes them look really pretty. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just. It's yeah, pretty for me. So I just. I love this plant. I love this product, and it just does great. We do it everything in here. We love. We love green glow. <laughs> it might. I haven't found that to be the case, but it could. And so occasionally you might just go and wipe your plant and then do it. But I haven't found that. But I, I could see how it could. So yeah. So yeah, I just want to bring that up. So Leah, do we have any questions and answers? <laughs> yes, Ken. <laughs> oh, man. That's like asking no. <laughs> your favorite child. I mean, come on. That's, that's pushing it. Oh, okay. So he just asked, what's our favorite house plant if we were going to a dozen island and could take one? This is, I would take the, in a, I would do a pothos. I know that's really generic, but I, that's the easiest thing for me to keep alive. And they, they come in so many different colors and, and different variegations that I just love pothos. I mean, that's me. But. Yeah. Why don't you speak on yours and all? Yeah. Okay, it. you guys. Chinese evergreen. Not only is it beautiful, but this is just one variety of Chinese evergreen. They come in all different colors, shapes, and sizes, and they're easy to grow. Plus, if you're on a tropical island, Ken, it's more humid. <laughs> That's cheating. So everybody, all these plants would love that, a little yeah. more humidity. This is a pot. Oh, I did have. Right? Uh, yeah. So this is the Marble Queen, and this is the um, green. Yeah. Sure, good. Golden. Whenever you want. So I find... That if it's getting too spindly up top, I'll pinch it off at the bottom mm -hmm. and it will make it fuller on top. Mm -hmm. um, so usually I'll go into like the next node, wherever the next leaf is, I'll cut it off just before that. So that way it just looks pretty still. I would do it here, but I don't want to. <laughs> it's too pretty. Um, so yeah, I'll just take it on the next node and then I'll continue to go from there, but it will fill up. So pothos and any most hanging, if you find that they're not having many leaves up here, but they got tons of tendrils, Pinch off those tendrils and it will start pushing growth from the top again. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, you yeah. just stick this in water and it, it's, it will keep super, going. Super easy. Easiest yeah. transplant one. Or you can, yeah, or you can do like rooting powder, dip it in rooting powder, dip it in the dirt. Either way. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, and the more sun that this gets, the more golden it will go. Same with like calpheas and stuff. The more sun that this gets, the more pink it will have in its leaves. So certain plants will, will change color depending on the light it gets. They can't, it will just probably go more green. Sorry. This is a calthea. This is just an assorted calthea. So this is also one. There's so many varieties of calthea and I've got more back there. Um, but they all kind of like more light than not and they'll take probably moderate water. But these are really great, pretty house plants. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Okay, good, good. That's great. I mean, I I find that they do better, but if you if they do great leaves, oops, I they take water to light, like to keep their colors going. But you know, east window. Okay, all the light or no light. <laughs> you're, you're lucky. You're lucky. Yeah. If you only have a north window, you better get busy. <laughs> I'll get you next. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Anything with a glossy leaf. Yeah. I can't like African violets. You can't anything with fuzzy. You can't because it will suffocate it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would. Um, I would do the cactus one because they're more of a. So she had Christmas cactus or or things like that to a fertilizer. 
I would do the cactus one because they are more in the succulent family. I know they bloom and stuff, but this still has good numbers for blooming. Um, but I would use the cactus, anything like that. You can use Schultz, that's not a problem. This is just more generic to succulent types. Yeah. yeah. Any Anyone other else? questions? Yeah, I'll get you next. Mm hmm. Do you want to I, I, I'm going to jump in. I, yeah. I did have something else I want you folks to think about. Yeah, we're living in Arizona. Sherry, right? repeat, oh, repeat the question. Oh, okay. The question is, this lady has some brown tipping on the edges of her house plants. Very common. Generally speaking, it can be a water issue, but moreover, it's low humidity in the home. We're in Arizona. I got a great product. You can mist your house plants. That's always great. I got something, and I have to just say on Amazon, it's a automatic mister. It has, it's battery operated. It costs me, you know, 25 bucks. You just spray your house plants whenever you feel like it, but it's this mist that comes out and it will increase the humidity in your house plants. Another thing you can do is what we call a pebble tray. You set your plant on top of some gravel and you keep that gravel wet. You set your plant on top of it. You creates humidity in the air and your plants will all love that. Um, but I'm telling you that automatic uh, mister I got, yeah. <laughs> and it raises the humidity in your home. Too. Does it get like tabletops damp or anything? No, ma'am. Nice it's just a very gentle mist. Okay. The other thing, of course, is if you have a humidifier in your home, that's also great. We'll raise the humidity in your home a little bit. That's what generally causes the brown tips it can be other things, overwatering, underwatering, too much fertilizer, but generally speaking, it's humidity. So don't freak out if it comes to your house plants. You can trim the edges off sometimes if it's not a big deal, but it, humidity is a, a little bit of a challenge here in Arizona. Yeah, the other yeah. thing you'll find that is our water is, sorry, one last yeah. point, is very salty. Yeah. So you'll, that's partially also what causes that tips. Yeah. Is our, we're just, so distilled water is great if you can afford that and do that. Um, otherwise, I mean, Dracenas are most likely to get those brown tips and they just kind of naturally get that and that's due to humidity. Mm -hmm. But jades and stuff, you'll find that there's salt deposits that come through on jades sometimes and that's just our water is just super salty. So they filter it and put it through their plants. So that's the reason you'll see those tips. Yeah, the things are so temperamental. Um, <laughs> so that could be not enough light, that could be not enough water. I mean, that could be multiple things. Yeah. That's more of a bring it in and we'll we'll take a look at it for yeah. you because that could be different things. Yeah, we just but, did a quick note. We can diagnose most plants. Yeah. You can bring them in or bring us a picture and we're happy to help you. Did you have a question? So not that I found. If you can keep it, so she's asking if soil as an expiration date or if it gets less fresh as it ages. Um, our stuff and what I find, if you bag it up, keep it airtight, put it in a garage where it doesn't get wet, it can go a really long time. It might just get more dry, but as long as you moisten it back up, it will be fine. Especially for ours, because it's got that peat moss, so if it goes really dry, you'll just have to really get it moist to get back into um, usable dirt. But that, So they don't really expire, they just dries up. <laughs> you just get moisten it, yeah. Yeah, normally that is. Certain house plants, that can be not enough or too much. <laughs> They're very like, you won't know. But for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, it's overwatering, especially if it starts on the inside of a leaf. That's where that's good. If it, yeah, inside of the leaf or, or towards the bottom, that's usually under overwatering. If it's towards the edge and or the top, that's usually not enough. That's the basis, but that's kind of how you can tell. Yeah. So, the okay, next. That I'm looking at, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they get yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the top, sometimes the bottom. Yeah. They're still blooming. Good. So, they act like they're sort of okay, but then they get these yellow leaves. That Could be light. They should. Yeah. They like full sun I'm pretty much. I give them as much sun yeah. as possible. Yeah. See, so part of that could be the transition from in to outside yeah. to in. Yeah. It, yeah, that's. It, I'd have to see it to, yeah. to tell you because dreams are kind of a different or bring thing. us a picture. Maybe we can. Yeah. yeah. 
sort of fine yeah. yeah it's when you transition those things that are supposed to be more outdoor and indoor yeah. it it takes a harder hit on them so yeah. that's just a case by case i'll do you and then i'll do you next Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Go on going. My guess is uh, she has a Rex begonia that's getting brown along the edges of all the leaves, and she's got it in a pebble tray and stuff. I would, if you don't soak it, I would soak it. Put it in a tub and try and soak that guy. I know they don't like as much water. They like to dry out. But usually when you see that edging, it's either not enough light or it's not enough water. You can't. Um, so I would just get more water to it or, or up your watering days and just add a little bit more and see how it does. I think that's what it is. And without humidity. seeing it, that and would humidity. be my guess. And humidity, because it could be, and this is where winter sucks here, because it could be that you're staying really wet in the soil, but your air is so dry that it's just drying out your plant. And that happens a lot here. And that's where that missing humidity helped because you can't water it more because your air is just dry and the thing's wet. So you got to figure out other things. So it could be that that's what's happening. Right. We can discuss more afterwards because um, I have just, that's more questions. That would always oh, yeah. be best. It's always better to bring pictures yeah. to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you, you can always uh, excuse, You can always cheat. You, can go you know, you can get a big container, and what we we call it a staging. It's what all the interior decorators do. Put some smaller pots inside or something, and stage it in appropriate size pot if you can. Just stick it in there. It doesn't have to be soil all the way down in those because we have these gorgeous. Corner, oh, they're fabulous, and we use them all the time for, for, for houseplants. But staging, so whenever your plant is not quite the right size, just put pebbles, rocks, or broken pottery, whatever you need to stage that plant to the appropriate size. That's all you need to do. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I would hang it if you can. So she's talking about she's got a huge plant and she wants to put grow lights and figure out how to best uh, put your grow light there. Is that that's right? Yeah. Okay. So if if it's too big and it's reaching your ceiling or something, you don't have something to overhang. I would hang it if you could. That's just it gets it more overall. Um, but if you need to go up around the side, you can. But my preference is to hang it if it gets too big. The grow light. Does that answer your question? <laughs> okay. And or you can prune it. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. I want a golden. I just play full and make it fun. I'll do a golden. <laughs> yeah, dog dogs are welcome in here. Just <laughs> FYI. Oh. So let me mention this before we uh let go. I'll answer more questions if you got them. So today and today only, we're doing 15% off pottery and soils. That's any pottery, any soils. Um, so we'll keep these at the front, and, or and you can grab these as you go, but we'll know. But that's today only online as well. You guys can come in today, and we'll get you 50% off that stuff. Cool. Okay, perfect. So that's what this is. Um, any other questions before we kind of end? And, and we can also answer afterwards. We'll stay up here for a little bit. Anything else? Yeah. 
Okay. How long do they bloom? A month or two or? This. Okay. Okay. So this year seemed to be a hard year for Christmas cactus, but that's not an excuse. I'm just saying it was a hard year and I don't know exactly why. I don't know. Yeah, things just panicked early because um, of the cold. So I, I just most people had that issue. Now it could have been, I'm not thinking not enough light because you've got pretty good light, but um, next year when you start seeing buds form, put it in your closet for about a week or so and that should get it to bloom faster and longer for you. And then you move it out. So yeah, Christmas cactus is the only one you do this with. So when when you start the season where they're starting to get buds, they're, they're, you know they're going to bloom, put them in your closet or a dark space for a week and it will get them to bloom faster and just open up um, without losing or dropping your blooms. I don't know why. There's science. I don't know it, but I have a handout. <laughs> we can get that out too. Um, but if it, that's the only one you do it with. And also Easter cactus when those come out. Um, so I think it was just the weather and then just houses were hotter than normal earlier and it just... It made things mm -hmm. panic, um, but that would be like my guess, but it happened a lot this year. Yeah, I mean, it's only there for a week, so you probably shouldn't have to because Christmas cactus only eat once a week or once a month, but um, yeah, if you need to, you can. Moderately, so, uh, moderately dry. Yeah. yeah, so when they're blooming season, you probably need to keep them a little bit more moist so they don't drop their, their buds, but in, in the other time of season, they can go a little drier and they'll be fine. They'll start going pruny when they need more water. So that means they just need more into their leaves. You'll start seeing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk on that. Yes. So um, I would agree. So, and, and I was going to do a monstera for someone last winter. And then I looked into it and I was like, no, no, we shouldn't do that because in the winter time, things are trying to go dormant. They're trying to sustain their life. And I know your houses are hotter, but they're, they can also feel the cold. So they're just trying to like maintain. End of February, beginning of March through the summer is the best time to do it because they can, they're growing, they can handle that transplant. They can, they will send out roots faster. They just handle it easier. So yeah, I would wait. Yeah, once it starts warming up, that's when I would start transplanting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. One other fun thing I wanted to add is during the monsoons, look at your house plants. They love the humidity. I came in here, I was on vacation for a week. I came back in, everything was twice its size because of the humidity. Just the ferns. So yeah, have fun with the monsoons. Don't be afraid. That's what house plants love. So yeah, most humid time of the year. We can go back yeah. Down. Take a look at house plants. Next week is on how to landscape design. That's percentages, trees, shrubs, angles, lines, formal, informal. And then uh, the last class in January is how to plant wildflowers. So there you go. And I've got I have more house plants coming next week on Thursday because I got decimated this week, but I still got lots of pretty stuff, but I'll have more truck coming next week. Just so you know. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.